So all the slides and charts that I'm going to show are based on CBRE research, unless otherwise indicated. Any opinions given are mine and don't necessarily reflect CBREs or anybody else's come to that. So just to uh, <coughs> defend myself on, on that point. Unless they're good opinions, then obviously uh, they, are, they are valid. Um, so I think the question is really, as investors, do we see life as a, a bed of roses or is it potentially a garden of thorns? And I think, like most things in life, it's a little bit of both. Roses come with thorns, and it's the inherent part of the beauty of the uh, flower itself. And what we are seeing is that there are markets that are difficult and perhaps prickly and require more cautious navigation, um, but the rewards are there if we invest in the right sectors. So in terms of some statistics, so the European Commission, um, they talk about the forecast GDP for 2016, and we are seeing more positive moves, certainly in Ireland, Poland, some of the Baltic states and Greece in terms of GDP growth. And in terms of investor sentiment, we've seen a strong movement in the Irish, Spanish and Central <laughs> Eastern European markets, which ties in to some extent with the forecast movement in GDP. There's certainly a question around Central Eastern Europe as to whether it's all about Poland. Um, but there are other positives outside of the Polish market in terms of GDP. So certainly in Czech Republic, uh, Romania and Hungary, uh, there are positive moves in GDP growth, looking up to 3% in those areas. Um, I'll come back to Hungary later on. This is a, a sort of a minor sort of case in point, just to show what some of the opportunities might be outside of Poland across Central and Eastern Europe markets. So in terms of consumer confidence, um, we're seeing a very positive trend, down from the low of minus 35% in 2009. Um, we've seen levels reaching those that we had back in 2007, um, but obviously with a different set of economic indicators, uh, thankfully. Obviously, this differs by market. So in terms of retail trade confidence, so that's confidence in retail trade, uh, we're seeing the UK at positive 14.3, and the last figures from Oxford Economics. Uh, Spain at positive 10.5, Poland positive 0 0.7, um, and then slightly behind there, as we're seeing Italy at minus 2.6, Germany minus 5.4 and France minus 7.7. 7. Um, the standout markets really are Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Hungary and Slovakia, all seen between positive 10 and positive 20% in terms of consumer sentiment. Uh, Slovenia being a standout at positive 24% and uh, Finland being a standout in negative terms at minus 27.1% in terms of positive sentiment towards Finland. So in investment terms, I mean, it looks positive. So more of the rose and the thorn, hopefully. So retail investments in Europe surging by 24% over last year. Um, Ireland and Spain hitting record highs, uh, but potentially Italy's lagging further behind than we might expect it to be. Central Eastern European markets are positive but subdued, and we're still potentially seeing most of that movement coming out of Poland. So I think there is positive sentiment to be seen elsewhere, but it's not necessarily being borne out in terms of investor action. Uh, the debt market's obviously further relaxing, larger loans are available, and margins coming in, and people prepared to look at what potentially 18 months ago might have been perceived as being riskier opportunities. Secondary remains a focus of the market, and investors in some areas moving up the risk curve in terms of search for yield. Uh, alternative sectors are seeing increasing activity, again for that potential of higher potential rewards. So in terms of overall commercial real estate investment in Europe, um, this continues to grow. So Q4 2014 versus Q4 2009 showed an increase of 550% from 12 billion to 78 billion euros. Um, the trajectory looks set to continue, uh, but the change in dynamic be more around which assets are bought um, in terms of availability of asset and the pricing that meets the needs of the investor. So in our recent EMEA investor intention survey, um, the focus is very much on Western Europe for European investors, with more than half of them indicating that so the majority of their investments were made in 2015. In terms of those alternative sectors, um, the active pursuant of those, we're seeing 32% of investors active looking at real estate debt, 27% uh, looking at student living as an asset class, and even sort of slightly more unusual ones, so self-storage, car parks, data centres, 
all actively been looked at by between 7 and 9% of investors. When asked what poses the greatest threat in terms of delivering the investor strategy, um, the perception that property has become overpriced was way ahead of the other factors. The next highest being economic uncertainty and slowdown and unrest out of EMEA. Um, it's, I guess the perception for different investors varies, but people were very much keen to stress that it's the uh, perception that assets are now overpriced where they've been looking traditionally. So in terms of the asset class as the most attractive, um, we're seeing a drop-off in the attractiveness of prime or core assets, um, to some extent, I guess, reflecting reality in terms of availability or affordability. Um, and even good secondary assets are tailing off in terms of the focus. We'll be also seeing growth in terms of value-add, so where um, businesses can add money to the asset and then sell it on again, and opportunistic, which indicates there's plenty of demand out there, but not necessarily enough supply in the market to meet that demand. So in terms of retail investment, so very strong performance out of the UK in 2014. Um, in percentage terms, strong performance in France and Spain, with only Central Eastern Europe and the Nordic seeing less investment than the previous two years individually. So on retail in terms of subsector, so all areas seem to have recovered, um, but there's a potential that some sectors are growing more rapidly than others. Shop Centre has been a case in point. So from 2012, 2013, 2014, continued growth in investment in shopping centres. Uh, there is oversupply in some markets. So Spain being a case in point, potentially in the Netherlands. Um, and I think obviously when people are looking to move up the risk curve, um, there's only really two components. Can they time the entry in the right place? And can they reposition it to be a more efficient asset? So in terms of relative shopping centre act investment activity, so France, Ireland and Iberia, I've seen tremendous growth figures uh, versus their 10-year average, uh, and Germany and the UK certainly performing well above their average as well. So all markets performing well. Uh, some markets certainly being a bit more um, high and low, as you can see on the, on the chart. The key message on the slide, really, is to take away the vast majority of investment is still within Europe, so cross-border European investment. Seeing 12.4 billion in 2014 versus 7.9 billion in 2013. So as a total, seen an increase of 24% in activity from 2013 to 14, um, from 41 billion to over 51 billion, the cross-border share of which is now upwards of 42%. So while there's a lot of movement in the shopping centre sector, there's obviously a clear disparity between net investors and net sellers. The only real net buyers of any scale being the institutional funds. <coughs> So investors obviously have clear strategies around a risk and to some extent a risk averse to certain markets. So Russia and parts of CE potentially are a challenge for, for some investors. It's hard then to sell on uh, that to individual investors and for some is it a risk they're willing to take. Having said this, retail is never going to be the first mover. You'd like to see movement in office coming more quickly. Uh, but investors are looking at what might be defined as risky investments. So hence the growth in Ireland, Spain and the likely growth we're going to see in Italy. Uh, investors are potentially rationalising in a different way to they did 18 months ago. So what was seen as being very risky then is perhaps more attractive now. So there's certainly caution in terms of strategy, and uh, calculated risk seems to be the way forward. And by calculated risk, we're talking about secondary markets such as Birmingham, Cardiff, Nuremberg, Bremen. So not a huge risk overall, um, but a risk nonetheless. So in terms of yield compression, during the global financial crisis, Capital flow is very much dictated by anticipation. Investors buying up prime assets in prime markets at relatively low prices and well ahead of the timing of the market recovery. So over time, the weight of capital caused yield compression. And there's a school of thought that suggests yields have been compressed about as far as they're going to do in these liquid markets. So how the investment forms going forward is now about what happens in terms of occupation and the rents that can be achieved. And we seem to be seeing of late more news headlines suggesting interest rates may remain lower for longer, um, potentially uh, much longer than anticipated originally. So in terms of yields from prime shopping centres, uh, we're seeing a consolidation of rents, of prime yields rather, between about 4 and 6%, with many markets seeing downward pressure as investors determine that these assets are still attractive 
even at previously untenably low yield rates. So where is, where is liquidity going to come from? So I think the UK always delivers, um, but there's simply so much product in the market in the hands of long-term investors, and that has been recycled relatively frequently. Uh, so for high-yield markets, different elements need to be explored. And if you look at where yields are today, uh, where the cyclical low was back in the years running up to 2008, um, we see a very different picture. Um, just briefly to touch back on those Central and Eastern European markets. So I had a look at Hungary in particular, something that was a, a case in point. So in terms of retail trade turnover, so we've seen strong growth in those markets. I sent the last figures available for Hungary, looking at 8.2% growth, so a very positive statement that lots of markets would want to see. And in terms of the key macroeconomic indicators, um, they are seeing strong GDP growth, um, which correlates very closely to strong retail sales, and consumer price index tailing off, again correlated positively with what's happening in the market. So all looking good potentially in Hungary. In terms of prime shopping centre yields, we're seeing Budapest um, sitting at around 7% yield, um, a very positive number. And in Hungary, it really is all about uh, Budapest. So I think it's 10 times the size of the next biggest city or town, if you like. 90% um, commercial investment sits in Budapest. 91% um, of something like modern office stock, again, sits in that market. But what we see, though, are rent, rent levels have room to grow, certainly in high street and secondary shopping centres in Budapest. The economic fundamentals do suggest there's room to move and leverage the market indicators further. So it all looks potentially positive in Hungary. Um, I think one of the big things about Hungary, though, is on March 15th this year, the government announced that um, they were bringing in new Sunday trading laws. So prior to this date, it was 24-7 um, all year round. And for March 15th, they are stopping Sunday trading in Hungary. Unless it's a store of 200 metres square or less, and it's managed directly by the owner or a member of his or her direct family. So the impact that that's going to have potentially is, uh, is quite large on lots of these assets. So with Slovakia, Slovenia, Romania, all bordering countries, all being able to open on a Sunday, there's potentially a big increase in cross-border trade and an impact on retail revenue that you wouldn't potentially expect. So whilst all the key fundamentals are there, um, it's certainly going to be harder to predict what's going to happen in the Hungarian market. So perhaps it is back to um, what's happening in Poland in terms of stability and knowledge of what's going on. So looking forward, um, there's obviously continued supply for prime product, but again, of course, lack of supply in the market um, in areas that people are most keen to invest in. There's a narrowing yield gap, uh, so the better secondary, and as we move forward, potentially tertiary product, become more attractive, simply due to the lack of opportunity elsewhere. Uh, emerging European markets, like Italy, Portugal, and the Netherlands, to see sustained demand in the quest for value. Um, the big difference between our investor sentiments in 2014 and 15 where people are much, much stronger in terms of their positivity towards Spain and Ireland than they are this year in terms of Italy and other markets. So it's just whether the investment hits the same levels it has done in those two markets. And certainly increased demand for alternatives, so factory outlet centres in retail, real estate debt, all showing up on a radar with increasing frequency and shouting louder each time. So on that point, I'll hand you over to our esteemed panel and even more esteemed chair, and I'm sure they'll give you a very eloquent discussion around some of these points. So, Great, thank you. Thank you. So